Hello everybody, how you doing? What's up? Today, I am going to be doing a little video, basically touring my theater setup. Now, right now, you're seeing a video, a shot of the whole setup, um, basically using a PC and then combining a bunch of different programs. I searched long and hard to try to find one program that would do everything I needed it to, and I couldn't. So, I combined a combination of different programs and applications to get a smooth, seamless setup. Now, this is not a perfect setup, um, and I'm sure there are better ways to implement this, but I've spent many hours trying to get everything working here, so I'm really proud of the way it came out, and I figured maybe you guys would have something to learn from it. Okay, so our base application, the thing that we're running everything off of here, is um, Windows Media Center. Okay. Side note, I'd like to apologize if you're looking at the video and it looks a little bit out of focus. I had to leave it a little bit out of focus because if I completely focus it, you can see there's a lot of moire from the pixels on the screen. So I leave it just a little bit out of focus just so that you guys don't get so much of that moire and it won't look so funky and nasty. Alright guys, so um, this is Windows Media Center. Now this is not the default theme that comes with Windows Media Center. I heavily modded it. Um, using a uh, Windows 8 theme for Media Center that comes that you can download. Uh, the link's going to be in the description for that. And then I modified that a little bit to change the background on different things. And then I use uh, Media Center, Assassin's Media Center something um, that edit, allows you to edit. The link for that's going to be in the description below too. That allows you to edit uh, the start menus and subtract and delete stuff as well as add new items like you can see here I've got the games uh, tab here so that's that I deleted the stuff I didn't want and kept only the things I did and we're basically just gonna go through this alright so I have the movies folder I have that link to a section on my computer with all all my movies um, have uh, I think about 750 gigs of movies in here so you can see it goes on for quite a while and I could go through this all day you know M O R S so these just keep on going a lot of movies there uh, that you can pick from and then you can play any of them let's just pick one uh, Cars 2 okay we'll watch Cars 2 so you watch the movie it comes up and then you can use the mouse to control that. So what you do is you, you go through here, watch whatever movie you want, try to avoid copyrights, so turn that movie off. Okay, so that's the movie section. I also have Netflix on here. If you want to watch some Netflix, you can do that. And a play DVD option if you want to put in a DVD. Um, then we go up to the music section. And there's a lot of songs in here. Uh, you can see down in the bottom corner it says 10,000 songs. So a lot of music that you can listen to if you want to listen to that. Uh, and then we go to the picture section. And then in here, if we go to pictures, this is stored on my server. I have this folder connected to the server sitting over in the corner of my room. And all my files are distributed on that server. So it can be a little bit slow on loading stuff up, loading up thumbnails and stuff but you can access all the pictures that are on the server's uh, pictures directory. And then the video library is the same thing. It's linked to another drive on the server. And here I just got all the videos. This one's a little bit faster at loading because there's not quite as many files to load. But you can see all those are there. And then the same thing as the videos. We can just choose one. Uh, start playing it, and then here you can see we have uh, the wedding video that I did for uh, Kira and Holden. So there's that, and then so that goes through basically what we have for the game section. Now what I did is I used the Media Center Start Menu Editor um, to add these two new icons and this under under this new Games tab. I replaced the Extras tab with the Games tab because I didn't need any of those weird extras, I just needed these games. So I used the start menu, start menu editor and then I developed this Steam icon and an emulator icon. 
So we go to the Steam icon, and it'll open up Steam. Now this is not guaranteed to be perfectly work perfectly. Um, like I said, I could not find one application that could do everything I needed it to in a way that I wanted it to and still look good while doing it. So I spread it across multiple applications. And you can see what it does is it minimizes Media Center, goes to my desktop, then opens up Steam in big picture mode. So it's going to open up Steam big picture mode where I'm going to have all the games. So first we go to my library, click games, and here you have all the games. Now not all these games are games that I bought on Steam. You can actually add games that you did not buy on Steam by if you go here and you click the plus sign, you can click add a non-Steam game. Now if you do this when it's not in big picture mode, you can also do things like edit the images like these thumbnails here and then you can download thumbnails off a line and put those thumbnails into your editor or put those thumbnails into your Steam library so every game has its own nice fancy thumbnail and it all looks really smooth and nice. So that's how you did that and then I can go in here and open up any game that I want. Uh, for example we can go and open up Far Cry 2 and click play. And then it's going to open up Far Cry 2, and then you'll be able to play Far Cry 2. So we'll wait a second for that to upload. Or open. What? Okay, so the game's opening up. Now, some of these games are actually compatible with a game controller. So if we go back to Steam and we pick up a game like say Need for Speed Most Wanted. This is the 2012 version of Need for Speed Most Wanted. You can go over here, pick up the game the Xbox controller that I have hooked up to a wireless receiver onto the computer with the correct software. Total investment about that was about $40. They paid $23 for the controller and like $7 for the receiver and then you just have to install the software and the receiver will work. Um, and then you can use any regular Xbox controller on your PC. So a lot of the games automatically support the Xbox controller, especially newer games, automatically support the Xbox controller. But some of the older games don't. You can download a key mapper that will allow you to change that. And I did that at one point, but my trial ran out. So I haven't downloaded a new one yet. So right now, I'm just using the keyboard for games that aren't compatible. But Need for Speed is compatible. So you can see, just with the controller, I can control the game. Except that it's not on. So I turn the controller on. And then I can control the game with my controller. So then we can go from there. Say we want to quit. It's going to take us back to Steam Big Picture mode. And from Steam Big Picture mode we can exit. Let's go exit Steam. And it's going to take us back into Media Center. So now we're back in the media center and let's say we want to check out some emulators. We can click emulators and emulators is going to open up XBMC. Now XBMC is what I used originally when I set up this theater PC but it kept giving me a lot of problems with launching just plain PC games as well as managing my movie collection and everything else. It kept crashing whenever I would open movies so I decided I would just leave it alone and just solely go with this. So the XBMC is only used for my um, emulators. So here you can see I've got some em different emulators built in. And uh, let's just choose Game Boy Advance for an example. It's going to load. And here I've got a ton of Game Boy Advance games. And it's updating a whole bunch of stuff right now. So it's lagging a little bit. But I've got all these so 
I mean, you know everyone wants to play Pokemon when they're talking about Game Boy Advance. So let's scroll down to Pokemon. And let's open up Sapphire. I like Sapphire. And then it automatically opens up Visual Boy Advance, which then we can play the game. This is not Pokemon. Oh, it is. Okay. So there, you can see if we can press escape and it'll make it full screen. And now we have the game ready to play. The internal, yes, yes. And then if we want to stop playing the game, we press escape. You can go up here to the top and click exit. It's going to take you back to XBMC. And then from XBMC, you can exit out of that. So we go down here, press that, press exit, and guess what it's going to take us back to? It's going to take us right back to Media Center. So there you go. You can see how this is all one cohesive, properly working system using three different applications spread across the computer to get a seamless and fully functional yet very nice looking system for a theater PC. Alright guys, so that's about it for this video. I hope you guys might be able to use something. Uh, links for all the stuff is going to be in the description below. Tutorials on how I did certain things. As well as maybe some files. Uh, so like say if you want to use the same background that I made, uh, I'll supply that. Or in our, and I'll also supply the files I used to make these uh, icons as well. You know, stuff like that. Uh, I'll put it down in the description for you guys to use. Um, theme file is going to be in the description and all that stuff. So that's about it, guys. I hope you have a great day. Hope you can use this video to your advantage. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace.